Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Xiaomi Pad Pro 5. Now, I've been waiting a long time for this tablet to hit the market, and there's been rumors for around the last year that they were going to release some new tablets, and it's finally here, and I've got my hands on it. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know I love these higher-end Android tablets, and the Xiaomi Pad Pro 5 doesn't disappoint at all. What we have here is a Snapdragon-powered 11-inch tablet. We have a 120 hertz display. It's running Android 11, 5G capable eight speakers built in, and I've had my hands on this for the last week. I've been using the heck out of it. This is a very powerful Android device. I'm super impressed with this. I love the screen, and in this video, we're going to test this thing out. Now, one thing I did notice uh, when I was doing the unboxing was there's not even a USB Type-C cable inside of the box. I know that a lot of manufacturers are kind of leaving out the charger, but it looks like they didn't even include a cable with this unit. My regular viewers already know that I'm a huge fan of Android tablets. I do reviews on them all the time, and some of my favorites right now are the Samsung Tab line, the S6 or the S7. When it comes down to it, those are some that are really hard to beat. But I think Xiaomi has really hit it out of the park with this one. Around back, there are dual cameras, a 5 megapixel and a 50 megapixel shooter. Up front is a 8 megapixel. And taking a look around the tablet, on the bottom here we have our USB Type-C for charging and sync. It also has speakers on each side, but there's eight speakers built into this tablet. Over here on the right-hand side, we have our volume rocker and our power button. Finally, on this side, we have three pogo pads, and this will allow us to easily attach their keyboard, which is sold separately. Moving right over to the specs, for the CPU, we have the Snapdragon 870. Now, this is basically an overclocked 865+, plus, and on that biggest core, it'll go up to 3.2 gigahertz. The GPU is the Arduino 650. We have six or eight gigabytes of RAM, and this really depends on what storage variant you choose. You can go with 128 or 256, but both of them use UFS 3.1 storage, so it's super fast. As for the display, it's an 11-inch IPS at 120 hertz. It's got a resolution of 1600 by 2560, and it supports HDR10 and Dolby Vision. We have eight speakers built into this tablet, an 8600 milliamp hour battery that does support quick charge 4.0, an eight megapixel front camera, and around the back, a 50 megapixel and a five. The tablet's running Android 11 with MIUI 12, but there are plans to upgrade this to Android 12 once everything's ready. So far, everything's been super smooth, and you know, going into this, I expected it to be with that Snapdragon 870. This is the 6GB version, so we have 128GB of storage and 6GB of LPDDR4X RAM. It does have Google Play installed, it's running Android 11, MIUI 12, planning to upgrade to Android 12 as soon as it's released. And when it comes to the screen, I know it's not an AMOLED display or an OLED. This is only an IPS LCD at 120Hz. It does support HDR10 and Dolby Vision. It looks absolutely amazing. Personally, I was a little worried about it when I heard the specs. You know, I was hoping that they would go with an AMOLED display and a big tablet like this, but whatever they chose here for this IPS LCD, it definitely gets the job done and looks really, really good doing it. So the first thing I always like to do is just run some benchmarks, and I kind of wanted to face this off against one of my favorite tablets right now on the market, the Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. First up, we have Geekbench, and the Xiaomi Pad 5 Pro did beat out the Tab S7 Plus by a little bit, but remember that Tab S7 Plus has the Snapdragon 865 Plus, the Xiaomi has the 870, which has a little bit of an overclock on it. And with each benchmark I ran, the Pad 5 Pro did beat out the Galaxy Tab, and with Antutu, we got a total score of 708,154. One thing you need to look for when buying a tablet is the Widevine support, just to make sure you have the correct version of Widevine installed. That way you can get HD Netflix, HBO Go, Hulu, and this has Widevine Level 1, so we have the highest level available. So when it comes to playing back HD content from our favorite streaming apps, we'll have no issues on the Widevine side of things with this tablet. I also wanted to try out a little bit of 4K video playback from YouTube. Now we only have a 2K screen, but we can still set this up for 4K video, and uh, it's running perfectly fine. Stats for Nerds is up in the top left-hand corner, and as you can see, it's running perfectly fine. By the way, this is also an HDR video. I know it's really hard to come across in another video, but it looks really great on this IPS display. So as a media consumption device, this ticks all the boxes for me. We got that beautiful 11-inch IPS display with HDR10 and Dolby Vision, eight built-in stereo speakers, and Widevine Level 1. Now it's time to see how well this tablet handles native Android games. And first up, we have Asphalt 9. I do have my performance monitor on screen. I know it's a bit hard to see in this video, but we are at 60 with this game. And, uh, you know, I expected it to run something like this really well. Thank you. 
Next on the list, we have Call of Duty Mobile. High settings, high frame rate, we're at 60. It's looking really good. Now, even though we have that 120 hertz display, this has not been whitelisted by a lot of apps that take advantage of those higher refresh displays. In the future, I expect it to be whitelisted with games like this here, which will go up to 90 hertz, PUBG. We also have uh, Minecraft, which will do up to 144. And with a display like this, we should be able to do 120, no issue. And finally, on the Android gaming side of things, we have Genshin Impact. I have a mix of medium and high settings here, where it's 60 FPS, and it runs great like this. But if you try to jack it up all the way to high at 60 FPS, you will notice some dips. If you want to go to 30, you can max this out no problem at all. But I think it's a good mix here with the high and medium, and I personally really like playing this at 60 FPS. But as you can see here, it runs great on the Snapdragon 870. You know, I also had to test out some emulations, so first up we have PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP, Chains of Olympus, Vulcan Backend, No Hacks, 4X Resolution, it's running at 60. And I'm not going to show off any Dreamcast, Neo Geo, or anything lower than this here, because it's going to run it just fine. That Snapdragon 870 has more than enough power for those lower end emulators. Next up, we have some 3DS using Citra. Now, the version I'm using in this video is actually from Google Play. Personally, I prefer using the GitHub MMJ build, but unfortunately, when I installed it and tried to run a game, I wasn't getting any picture on the second screen, so I did have to resort to the one from Google Play, but it's actually running pretty decent. GameCube using the Dolphin emulator, one of the harder ones to emulate. This is kind of one of my go-to tests, Auto Modalista. Vulcan back in, we're at 1x resolution, and it's running really well. I do notice some dips every once in a while, but even on the Snapdragon 888, in certain situations with this game, I do see it dip down to around 56. But overall, this tablet is definitely holding its own when it comes to GameCube, and the easier to run games will run at a higher resolution. You can go up to 2x, and even some games like Wind Waker will be able to do 3. But for something like this, which is harder, we just have to stick it at the native. And finally, at least for this video, we have some Wii emulation, still using that Dolphin emulator, Vulcan back in, native res, this game natively ran at 30 FPS, so that's what we have here. Sonic Colors, it's running great. So when it comes to the cameras on tablets, I'm not a big fan of them, but this 50 megapixel on the rear with the correct lighting actually looks pretty decent. We have sufficient lighting for this photo here, and here it is in low light. Here's one more with good lighting. I also did the same thing with low light, and you know, I wouldn't buy this specifically for the camera, but it's really not that bad as long as you have enough light. When it comes to battery life on the Xiaomi Pad Pro, I actually got 12 hours and 45 minutes of runtime out of this thing. Now that wasn't just continuous gaming, that was a mix of video playback and everything like that. When it comes down to it, you do have all day battery life. This was a little less than the Galaxy Tab S7 Pro, that one's coming in at around 13 and a half hours of battery life. But this tablet does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0. It does up to 67 watts, and this 8600 milliamp hour battery can be charged from 0 to 100 in 73 minutes. So overall, I'm really loving the Xiaomi Pad Pro 5. We have plenty of power with that Snapdragon 870. You can get this up to 8 gigs of RAM. The one you saw in this video only had 6, but that wasn't holding me back at all from doing everything that I wanted to do. It has great battery life and amazing speakers, but there are a couple little features that I would have loved to see out of this tablet, like HDMI over USB Type-C. Unfortunately, we don't have any video out on this, and that's something that the Samsung Galaxy Tab line does have that this one doesn't. Plus, with Samsung, we get DeX, which is kind of an Android desktop operating system. And personally, that's actually something that I use a lot with my Galaxy tablet. So it would have been really nice to see at least video over USB Type-C with this one here. Another thing I would have loved to see was a charger in the box. I know that all of these manufacturers are kind of doing away with the charger in the box, but since this does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0, it would have been really nice to have one of those chargers packaged with this tablet. 
But unfortunately, they didn't even put a USB Type-C cable in the box with this thing. But if that's something you can overlook, this is a great Android tablet. We do have the correct Widevine certification, so we can do HD streaming from our favorite apps. We can play any game from Google Play, and emulation performance on this is outstanding. And speaking of emulation, I will have a dedicated emulation video coming up soon on the channel, so keep an eye out. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning more about this tablet, I will leave a couple links in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.